<clears throat> All right, I'm back. So uh, let's take a look here at a vacuum pump. So if you've noticed your brakes, uh, how do I say this? Your brake pedal has has got more travel in it. You know what I mean? So you step on your brake and it it's, it presses further down before the brakes engage, right? Because on these little golfs, man, you barely tap the brakes and you about go through the windshield when, the, when everything's working right. So I've been having vacuum problems, related issues, and just been going through this thing. And, uh, you know, I'm working my way through it. I get into the vacuum pump, and, and one of the things I noticed on mine, it's kind of hard to see here, but if you take a look at this, see this play here? Okay, so this vacuum pumps inside the motor and that, the cam, turns this. And look, my don't even, <laughs> my barely don't even want to turn. Well, I slapped it back together and I didn't probably put it together right. I was in a hurry, but I, get, I replaced it. This one's junk, so I'm saving it. If there's any parts in here I need to use. So this will sit on the engine like that right so your nipples face in the firewall and this engages into the cam and the cam spins um, a little assembly around I'm not gonna take it apart it's full of oil it's nasty but there's a there's a little assembly in there and it has two little wipers on it okay so little two little wipers spin around in elliptical orbit in here um, it's pretty neat how it works when wipers get worn dirt gets in the oil wears it out on the inside um, and causes issues on these a lot. Mine was in actually excellent shape. I couldn't believe it. My, I was I was aghast at how well the inside, I did look at this, um, I put it back together, but how well the inside of it looked, right? The inside was just really good shape. The inside of this vacuum pump is in better shape at 413,000 or 414,000 miles less scoring than the one that I put on with 130,000 miles, right? Okay, and it's not major scoring, it's just little itty bitty scratches, but like I keep telling people, full synthetic, extended performance, mobile one, change it every 20,000 miles, 30,000. Okay, back to the issue at hand. So what we've got going on here, let's go up here and get some light. So what we got going on here is if you take a look at this nipple, this little nipples is, is pressed in here. And what happens is you see it's wiggling. Okay, and that's wiggling on the insert here. This is pressed in, just a shitty design. I know, I rag on all these shitty designs. I just love to, I, I should have stayed in college in engineering, but sorry folks, ran out of money, had to do something else. Couldn't afford the travel and the books and all that nonsense. My grants didn't come through in time. So long story many moons ago. So if you take a look at this, see that? That's what happens to these things. And then what happens, you start leaking here, around here. And that's going to draw in dirt and whatever else is going to draw in into your pump to trash your pump. And it's going to leak. It ain't going to hold a vacuum. And you're going to have all kinds of problems, right? You're wondering why you can't hold a vacuum and you go through all your lines and you finally figure there's part of it, right? It's not always one thing. It's usually just a bunch of little things that cause the problem. And that's why it's such a pain in the ass to try and figure out because you're like, well, I fixed that and I figured that out. And, and then you go and fix something else and the car says, oh, hey, everything's running good except now we're going to throw another code because this stuff's running good and we can detect the other code because that's running right. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> I replaced mine. In the process, I cracked the stupid line. Yeah, high quality plastic that goes back here. Um, and there's a line, of course, comes off the nipple, goes underneath this intake and let's get some light on here. And what happens is you got to be careful because you see this plastic line right here. This one. See this one? The one I'm flipping off. 
Okay, this is kind of a semi-rigid plastic line. goes down into your brake booster. See it down there? And that's the brake booster, that round pancake, right? Somewhere in here, and I'm not going to deal with it because I just did it this morning. I'll, that's another thing I'll figure out. And I'm going to replace this line because I'm pretty sure I either cracked this fitting here, cracked it in here, and it feels cracked right here, to tell you the truth. I just ran out of time today. I'm tired, so I'm done working on this thing. It's like 11.30. So uh, that'll be my next project, replacing that line. I looked up online. Some people replace that with some soft rubber hose, and that solved that problem. So that's been pretty common, people cracking those lines and having an issue off of their vacuum pump. So anyway, I got my vacuum pump replaced, made it look pretty, got it on there, and it helped. And uh, hopefully that helps some people out. So check your, uh, check your outlet on your vacuum pump. I add a little silicone to mine. And on the outlet, on the back side of the outlet here, I add a little silicone to that press fitting in case it were to leak. This one was tight, so uh, what can I say about it? Oh, yeah, disassembly. Have fun! <laughs> it's another one of them. You gotta take the engine apart to get the bolt out. Okay, so you see where my orange vacuum line's flowing underneath the uh, vacuum pump. Can you see that bracket that's holding on that orange vacuum line? Okay, there's a plastic piece on the bracket holding the, the clip. The plastic clip holds the vacuum line. You see it right in front of you. What you need to do is so you don't have to drain your antifreeze and pull off your glow plugs and the assembly for that holds the glow plugs. To get this little bolt off, what you're going to do is you're going to remove this plastic clip with a little screwdriver. It comes out, and you're going to bend this stupid metal tab back so you can access this bolt. I think it's a 10 or not, it's a 10 millimeter from this side because you're not going to get it from this side. Tried it, been there, done that, can't do it. So you bend this tab out of the way, you get in there with a 10 millimeter and loosen it, and there's one on the back side that you can get to with a socket from the back side of your glow plug preheater assembly. So that should save people a lot of time because I'm sure in the book it tells you to remove this, drain the antifreeze, remove this, so you can get at that nut. And uh, I tried an extension with a swivel and all that, it just, there's no room. Glow plug's in the way. And if you pull the glow plug, you got to drain the fluid, right? Because you pull the glow plug, it's going to leak all the antifreeze out. So I did it without it. So anyway, you don't want to do that. Take this plastic clip off, grab some vice grips, bend this back, get in there and get that off, get on the back side, get the other one off. And then there's this one here. So there's three bolts, and, and they're double bolts. See, there's a nut that holds the bracket. It's a 10, and I think it's a 13 nut underneath, right? And that's a, a bolt that's coming through with a nut welded to it, right? It's a stud. So there's a stud here. There's one on the back side. You take the 10 millimeter off here, 10 millimeter off the back side. I believe it's a 13 underneath. You pull the bracket off, pull the 13, use a 13 millimeter on there to get that off. And on the back side, and a 13 here to get that off. You gotta be careful pulling your pump out. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit with these in the way. Just take your time, don't bust your glow plugs, pull your pump up, be patient with it. Putting your pump back in, you've got a uh, you've got to align the pump, the back side of the pump has to align with the uh, camshaft. So you you know you, you guys ain't stupid, you know what I'm talking about. So there's a a keyway in here and the pump and the cam have to line up. So when you put it back on, you gotta, you know, turn clock your clock your uh, pump here until it lines up and sits in there so not hard and then put it back together so you don't really need to take your preheater assembly apart and all that nonsense to get at that pump so anyway hopefully that helps some people out careful with that plastic line going to your uh, vacuum boost and uh, so you don't crack it like I did mine and uh, it's probably leaking anyway. A lot of people say they're just leak because they're crap, but it wouldn't hurt to check it. If you got that all off and get this off, may as well pull that off and do a vacuum check on it and make sure it's not leaking. So anyway, hopefully that helps some people out in the vacuum pump here. 
Um, it would be nice if we get our hands on a uh, new wipers in there because really all mine needed, to be quite honest, all it needed was new wipers on the inside of the pump. There's little little wipers that are replaceable, right? Um, but I have no idea where to get them and I didn't feel like calling to Mars and back to try and find some. So I just grabbed this pump off of a <clears throat> another motor, threw it on. But if it gives me any problems, this one... Then I'm going, honestly, I'm just going to put my old one back on with new wipers on it because it's in pretty damn good shape internally except for worn out wipers. And then that bushing, that press fitting, but I could fix that press fitting with a, a little ingenuity. So, hell, I'd probably just weld it if, I, if I'm sure I could keep the temps down on it, check the type of metal it's, I'm dealing with. Um, I'd have to make sure I'm, the metals are not aluminum and, and uh, steel. Probably solder it or braze it. I'd have to sit down and look at it if I was going to do that. But if I, if I went back to the old pump or had any more problems with that nipple, then I would definitely do something that would be permanent. You know. All right, hopefully that helps some people out. Um, vacuum pump-wise, what else can I add in here? Oh, yeah, your uh, clamps that come on here on these vacuum pumps, you've got these, these stock clamps. And they're just garbage. They're these press clamps. They're not even spring clamps, right? I don't know how to explain them. Uh, you know, because you've got them. So take a look at them. Cut those pieces of shit clamps off. Uh, they don't maintain tension on the line. The line will leak also. So get yourself a real clamp on those lines. And you should be good to go. All right. Over and out. Have a good night. Hopefully that helps some people out. Take care.